Stereo azimuth, again, I got another amp in today, okay? Uh, this amp is mighty, mighty good. Fortunately, um, I'll tell you about it, it's very rare amps, very cool looking. This is the amp. That Look at that. Plexiglass. What is that? Uh, basically, it's a company called ECP. Um, and these are Cinemag, uh, like, transformers. Um, so they actually use uh, some transformers in the audio path of the amplifier. Um, and I don't have to open this up to look inside. So we're going to look at it in just a second. But another thing I want to show you right quick is there is a matching, there's a matching DAC. So yes, this is another DAC. It also too, well, on this side, has uh, output transformers. And we'll go over those in just a second. So, but first let's look at the, uh, let's look at the amplifier itself. I'm gonna pull this over here um, so we can take a good gander at it. Uh, let me switch. So this is the this is the amp here, and so it's um yeah ECP. Uh, this is a black diamond amplifier, headphone amplifier. Um, this is the prototype. This was lent to me by somebody who is the current owner of uh, said prototype, and uh, so thanks to um, thanks to him for that. So. Basically, <clears throat> let's just go over it right quick. I don't know what the specs of this headphone amp is, how much power, uh, what it's all about. I, I'm kind of familiar with some of the ECP designs and like the 3F, and I have the Torpedo 1 uh, pair of feed tube amplifier, which I really like. But I've never really heard like any of their solid state stuff, like their like the 3F that um, seems to be very very popular. So it is unbalanced. So on the back you just get power input, fuse, uh, power switch, and then you get RCA in. These aren't color coded, um, but it's just right and left because this is you know from the back. This would be the right, and that's the left. You have a um, well. We'll go through the internals in a minute. Volume and then unbalanced headphone jack here. So just looking at the power, uh, it has a this um, switcher power supply here, just uh, off the shelf uh, switcher power supply. Uh, and then you have um, like these, these four transistors on the end with these big heat sinks. Um, that's another thing I kind of notice. And of course I noticed that the headphone jack, these I believe are the final like output before you get to the headphone jack. So uh, I do believe that is correct. And then you have a nice uh, Alps pot here. And I can even read it because it's even here, it's a 50K um, two gang like stereo Alps pot, nice milled aluminum uh, volume knob. You can see back here, this looks like the input, um, and I'll raise this up instead of lowering the camera. Uh, this is the input, like sort of like daughter board looks like. Uh, it looks like a combination of discrete plus maybe some op amps here. Um, so, and then this is all the other internal circuitry. Now the cool thing about transformer like output is that it automatically is going to remove the DC, so there's no reason to use a you know um, DC blocker, AC coupling, DC coupling, because uh, once you put it you know on there uh, on the coil, it won't show up on the other side. So um, very nice layout, mostly SMD like small SMD parts, and I know that these are built by hand. Um, and they are not built by a machine like a parts picker using like solder paste and all that kind of stuff um so that this was very painstakingly like sort of put together um quite amazingly actually um which which is very very nice and it's in the spikes again so like i said this was done uh like as a prototype 
I think, to kind of like show the internals without people like me opening up and see what's inside. Uh, you, they could take it to, uh, you know, shows. They could um, send it off as loaners. Uh, and the plexiglass is really cool how it's put together. Is it's basically layers upon layers of, uh, like, just a little bit of plexiglass, just like a small piece, like uh, maybe half an inch. And then, like, that's what makes up the, uh, the, the sort of depth. And then you have these full plexi pieces as the, the top and the bottom. Uh, so, and then you also have these other, um, <clears throat> like sort of like full plexiglass pieces for the front and for the back and nice little laser etching. It's actually on the bottom of the, uh, of the plexi. So this is usually if it was on the top, you would feel it and it would feel a little rough, but that feels very smooth. So now I'm going to look at the, um, this is a walnut. So this is what I understand uh, they make currently, or they they have like the Walnut X.3, I think, DAC. This is the X.1, I think, prototype. Um, so basically on the inside, and I have to check, I think it's a uh, Wolfson chip. Uh, let me see what the um, Wolfson chip number is. Let me grab my flashlight and my glasses because I'm an old man. Um, W8741G. So that is the, uh, and it looks like it's using some sort of Burr Brown, um, like SRC 4192I, like input, uh, chip. And then it's a Wolfson DAC and it looks like a couple of, um, buffers, BB, OPA. 13 some sort of um uh like other soic here i don't know 134 ua i have to look that up but basically i know that these are like the output chips like this is the uh and i'll turn off the the light here because that's that's distracting to you i know um but basically what you have is you have the input here also have another um switcher this one is not as big because it doesn't require as much power as the amplifier does um then you have a separate like usb now this is a um and i'll hold this up this is not an amanero board the current walnut has an amanero board this one seems to be a very similar type which means it's basically giving you usb to i2s so instead of usb to spdif because it looks like there's one two three four wires that are coming from the board. And if it was just like SPDIF, then it would just be like two wires, but it's actually four wires that are coming over. And it looks like it is, um, th that's probably the SPDIF side that is like transformer isolated on this side, which is nothing's connected. Uh, so, and then it goes straight to the input side. And then this pins is how probably that the board, uh, like the chip is getting like a, it's power and signal um and then you have your two outputs and then the two outputs uh like once it's actually you know uh brought up to to proper uh voltage and or filtering then it goes into the two transformers now the two transformers now also on the walnut x.3 they use uh i mean both of these are using cinemag transformers they made the switch over to Lund Hall Transformers at some point. Um, I don't know the exact history uh, of when they switched over. Um, but as you can see here, these are, they look like EI type transformers. They don't look like the circular type that you normally see. Like in, like here's the, these are what Cinemags normally look like to me. When I think Cinemag, I think these like, you know, can looking things like, uh, but these, um, and I don't know if you can see, I'll turn it around this way. You can see it says Cinemag. And you can even see the model number of the Cinemag, which appears to be CMOQ-4HPC. So I'd have to look that up to look up the specs, but 
Um, I'm it's assuming, I, I know they are really big on using, um, you know, transformers as far as like the output because of you get a couple of different uh, advantages of using uh, transformers. Um, one of them is that, you know, the circuit sees the one side and it's always completely like coupled correctly. Like, you know, whatever is on this uh, on the other side doesn't really matter. Um, it's like more isolated, basically. Uh, so you get a, a, a you know, because it's just a coil of wire and then you have another magnet, the coil of wire around the other magnet. And so therefore they can that you can get really um, isolated no matter what your source is. The other thing is that there's no reason for any sort of DC blocking caps or AC coupling, no DC coupling, none of that. It automatically gets rid of the uh, the DC. So this, these two, make a quite you know nice pair. Um, it's kind of funny how the 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 US the uh, <laughs> if you look at it this way the. The, the RCAs don't really line up. One is vertical and the other one is uh, horizontal. Uh, but, you know, that's okay. You can still, they're still close together. They're the exact same size, like plexiglass. Uh, they would sit like this, kind of on top of each other. Um, they kind of like lock in place. And, and um, I'll switch over to the other camera right quick so you can see. And then, you know, this is what you get for the front. Um, so really nice build quality. Uh, I mean, both of these boards really, and, uh, you know, once again, these have more like kind of through hole parts, uh, than the other. And I know that this USB is like a more off the shelf USB, which, you know, is not, not too bad. I mean, who wants to build their own USB, uh, solution? Um, and then, you know, so the only like really SMD parts like on here is a couple of the uh, SOICs. Most everything else looks like uh, through hole. And then of course, like the DAC chips and the input chip are, are uh, uh, SMD mounted. So really excited to try, you know, both of these. Um, so because these are some really, uh, really nice amps and I don't know the exact like price of these when they these came out like if you were to get them in the metal case because you can't they didn't sell them in the plexiglass case uh you would you would buy them in a um, metal case maybe with some wood sides or wood top i don't know uh, i'll try to find some pictures of these like fully built uh, like that are that are the real versions um so uh and of course you have to put the deck underneath and put the amp on top you want to do that anyway for venting but of course they have the two you know transformers that are sticking up out of the case <laughs> so anyway so i'm excited to get and actually i got these backwards i need to put it on this way so i'm going to listen to this and in a second i'll tell you what i think about it so well before we get to the review i just have one thing to say um, I apologize for the next section because, um, and, and this video was actually recorded like months back and I thought I lost it and it was on a different hard drive and it never got posted. I thought I'd posted it, uh, because it was around the same time that I had the Singster or something like that. Um, so I, but apparently it was lost. And then when I found it, I realized why it wasn't posted. And that is because the second section, which you're about to see, which I'm going to, which you'll see, um, the audio was not taking from my microphone. Uh, at the time I was using like a lapel mic. I wasn't using like one of these mics. And um, apparently when I recorded, it recorded the microphone from the camera which sounds like crap. So you can hear me. Um, it may even get distorted a couple times. Um, but 
It's not the best audio quality, obviously, but you can't hear what I'm saying. So I just wanted to apologize first before you see the second section and wonder what the heck happened. So that's what happened. So anyway, um, yeah, because it's an incredible amp and everybody should hear one and it's awesome and I loved it. And so, but we'll, we'll, uh, but yeah, sorry for the bad audio again. Thanks. Well, the black diamond, how was it? Ah, uh, it's really, really, really good. Uh, I really, really enjoyed it. Um, very like micro dynamic um not as much like more micro than macro dynamic meaning it didn't sound big and explosive and just like loud and in your face but it didn't sound soft either it had a lot of like those little details and those little things like in between but it also just seemed to be like the volume just kind of didn't really like waver like it didn't have a lot of just like big swings and dynamics like if I was listening to drums it just seems like the drums were just kind of like there in space and not really like I was standing in front of it and listening to it like really loud even if you turn up the volume um, you kind of understand this idea of like micro dynamics and, and macro dynamics I felt like it was good enough for like uh, harder to drive um, you know Sennheiser's HD 600 HD 650 um, very neutral sound wasn't really super warm wasn't really super uh, bright it was just like very like right in the road right in the middle it still was really wide and had this nice sort of staging for everything everything like had its place but I think with the micro uh, dynamics like it, it definitely paired better with the um, like a like a very dynamic sort of DAC like uh, like my Theta uh, DAC um, or my modified like Bifrost uh, amp that was just like their very sort of almost uh, aggressive uh, sounding DACs and it, it definitely paired better with this made this a lot more sort of relaxed in presentation not relaxed like the seeing it start to, not like the SA1 the last amp that I reviewed but um, because this definitely was not as warm as that amp and definitely uh, was had a little bit more upper like energy but the upper energy wasn't like very distracting it was very sort of like welcome like all that like good stuff that you want um so yeah it was it was very very nice it did uh when i went to like uh i have my um pmx twos which are the modified um oppo pm twos basically those are a little bit harder to drive and it did fantastically on those uh, probably did better on planers or like lower impedance headphones than it did on the higher impedance headphones the higher impedance headphones like I could still like turn like I could turn it up like all the way on certain tracks and it just be like okay I don't need to do more volume <laughs> it was like that's really banging loud um, so yeah plenty plenty of, of volume on the dial um, so one thing I want to point out, and I'm going to go to the camera to, uh, to kind of show you. So this right here, one thing I want to make mention is that this, I pointed out this board here when we went through the initial, uh, like sort of when I was pointing everything out. And this board here, as I take a closer look at it, it has actually nothing to do, even though these wires here are really close to the uh, the out the the um, input jacks they have nothing to do with the audio path these are taking from this uh, switcher and it looks like they are regulating or doing some sort of like uh, you know voltage split um, to where you get a um, you know positive 
negative rails in like a in like a ground. So that's what these three are. And if you look at the bottom, I can't really zoom in, um, but there's some little markings by these three uh, little um, by these three little wires. So that says like one of them says like V uh, negative. One says G, which I'm assuming is ground, and then one says V plus. So this is the positive negative power rails. I don't know how much. It doesn't say like 15 plus V, 15 minus V. I don't know. I would have to like get out my meter and take this apart and see. I'm not really that concerned with it. Um, it doesn't seem to be like that big a deal. Um, so it looks like this. Um, if I look really close, so let me grab my uh, flashlight right quick. Because if I look at the actual like power supply, um, that it it's actually outputting 15 volts, negative 15 volts. Uh, so now whether that is you know regulating that down to you know 14 or maybe 14 and a half, maybe 12, I don't know whether. But that's my guess is it's probably doing some further. Uh, regulation and cleaning up and smoothing and you know so you get the cleanest amount of um, power and um, driving for whatever that you what is needed um, so yeah so I think that's what's there it also could be taking off of the input for something else I don't, I don't really know I like I said I don't, I don't have the schematic for this but that's what I can tell you is that this board uh, is powering at least um, this uh, section that's how it's getting its power for um, like the board the other thing I wanted to show right quick which I thought was really cool is I'm gonna plug this up and it's one thing that I didn't get to show you uh, before is that when you actually plug it up and because this is plexi and other people who might have this amp or might even have a you know 3f amp or something like that you may not realize but when I turn it on Look at all those LEDs. It lights up really well. And even if I turn the light down a little bit, you can kind of see it glowing. Um, they're kind of like these glowing red LEDs, which is really, really cool uh, as soon as you turn it on. So uh, there is an LED like in the front here, um, you know, that tells you that it's on. That's the actual indicator. But these little ones on the circuit board, these SMD uh, LEDs I thought were really really cool um, you know because that is, that is part of circuitry that is part of like you know you can use LEDs for different stuff uh, like for example the the bottle head crack tube amp uses the LED for the uh, to you know bias the um, the preamp tube so um, yeah it uses that sort of cathode bias with the LED a uh, nice little trick there so that's that's really really cool but yes I really did uh, like this amp um, it's really 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 cool uh, really really great sound um, and it is very versatile I can use it on you know I can use it on IMs I can use it on um, planers I can use it on Sennheiser headphones so um, and you always get like a great sort of sound out of it especially if you have a really good um like i said i think it pairs better with the aggressive DAC. so i'm going to turn this off so now i'm going to focus my attention on the DAC. speaking of the DAC, right here um so here's the DAC, and once again i'll plug this up too so you can kind of see the leds as well so there you go there's not as many just the two um, boards here, um, the two analog boards, I guess, uh, like light up with, you know, a couple different LEDs. Um, so once again, I think this is very sort of also like micro dynamic focused, I guess you would say. Um, I, I, some people say that these pair really well with the you know with the with the amp you know with the actual like um actual uh ecp amp and and i will tell you it's like micro on top of micro which 
if that is what you're going for, if that is your, you know, thing, then yeah, th that's going to get you there. Um, very nuanced, um, you know, very sort of Plankton-esque, um, but I think it's sort of missing some slam, I guess you would say. Um, I don't know if that's part and due to, like, the Transformers, but it, it just feels like there's sort of a compressor or limiter like on everything in the, in the sound so it's just like it brings everything that's small like forward but then everything big kind of gets shoved down but you don't really hear the dynamics working it's just the, the the inherent nature of it and and you know part of that can be attributed to a lot of different things I'm, you know uh, won't really speculate but I do like this Wolfson sort of implementation or maybe like the, just these transformers or like whatever over the uh, Walnut X.3 DAC that I heard. Um, this did not seem to sound as sort of like mid-centric as I found the X.3. I found this one a little more, you know, balanced sound and it still had some good low end, good high end, very clear and, and just like liquid sort of mids um and i, I mean th this would pair great with like an aggressive uh like uh amplifier and i might just do that uh here in a minute and and plug it up to my um plug it up to one of my more aggressive sounding amps uh but yeah i think that it sounds good i mean i did plug it up to my valley uh valley 2 and it, it did sound you know uh really really good um i love i love 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 uh acoustic music uh with this because i think like i said it just brings out more of that um nuance and uh sort of the proximity and the in the closeness that you get with all of that and it just it just like kind of like draws you in um the more sort of bouncy very dynamic sort of electronic music um you know still sounded okay still sounded great but I just think that, like, for a natural sort of sound, like, Wolfson just has that sort of natural sound sort of sort of down. Um, and I think that it's really good. I think this is a very... This is even better implementation, I think, than... As far as, like, sound quality, as far as, like, what, what I would think. Uh, you know, other people may think differently, and that's fine. Uh, because, I mean, they did refine the design and, and made the... Uh, the X.3, and I don't know if that was because, I mean, they're using Lund Hall Transformers, they're using, like, uh, you know, different sort of power supply, maybe simplified some things uh, to make it, you know, um, not really simplified in, in, a, in a bad way, but just, like, um, take away sort of the, the uh, you know, we can accomplish this better by, by doing it this way, like, more efficient, I guess you would say, but I still think that they're they're both um, kind of like the same um, sort of uh, design. Not not too 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 much difference between them. I think. I mean, you definitely have like a a sound between them. But yeah, I think the output transformers and things like make them sound a little bit different. And my kind of preference is probably like for um, for these. So yeah, really 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 good DAC. I mean, I like it. Um, it's USB only. That's my only other complaint about these. Um, so no, uh, can't really use it with, like, my Pi or my Mitrum Amber or, you know, whatever, uh, my Raspberry Pi, uh, but you can't just use it with, that's, that's, your only choice is, is USB, so, but still, really good design, I think that, you know, my friend who has these, um, these are, this is a really cool little, uh, desktop system uh, I mean for sure and it gets a lot of attention with the, with it being plexiglass and getting to see all the design and uh, the lights and everything it does take up a little bit of room um, as you can see here I mean this is like if I get out my tape measure from front to back I mean we're looking at you know ten and a quarter inches here um, pretty pretty long and, and and about you know three and a half inches tall so um, you know, kind of a big, bigger desktop system. Um, you know, it's kind of like, and instead of being like sort of this way, long ways, uh, and, and narrow, you know, you're having to put it, you know, like this, 
you know, front to back, um, kind of, which takes, you know, kind of like that shotgun house kind of style uh, sitting on your desk, but still really, really cool, really, really awesome design. Um, it was really, really awesome getting a chance to hear it, and I appreciate it. And, and I hope you guys appreciate this video. Be sure to like and subscribe. I'm going to have some more, you know, reviews, some more DIY stuff, um, s some more stuff dealing with, uh, you know, turntables and, and, and more stuff dealing with, with headphones and DACs and stuff. So I hope you guys uh, stick around. We'll see you guys later. And and if you have any ECP stuff, you know, any, any ECP audio things or have any questions about it, um, be sure to let me know. Hit me up in the comments. I will be sure to respond. See you guys later.